Hello friends, my name is Colin Keenan. I am a staff member with the North Carolina State University Libraries. My work deals primarily with virtual and augmented realities, um, as well as any work that has humans and computers interacting in unique and exciting ways. Um, today, we are getting together to talk about avatars, 3D avatars that represent uh, how we would like to look when we are in three-dimensional online spaces such as virtual realities. Um, the reason that this is uh, an interesting topic to us today is due to its uh, role in the upcoming Brickyard Broadcast concert. Uh, this project, of course, is a unique sonic composition that is built to be heard within a three-dimensional uh, build of the university's cherished Brickyard, uh, University Plaza. Uh, this is a specific common, uh, a specific composition which has been built to be heard in a virtual space. And although we won't be able to be all together upon our first time hearing the premiere of this work physically, we'll all be able to share uh, digital space and uh, hear the concert together uh, as it's been meant to be heard in that way. Of course, in order to occupy online space, we, and see one another and communicate with one another, uh, we very well might want to talk about what our characters will look like, and this is the role of an avatar. So you may be used to using avatars within video game worlds, um, or even in some video chat applications. Uh, we choose how we would like to present ourselves in absence of or in preference of a webcam. Um, if all of that sounds pretty uh, high tech to you, uh, don't worry. First off, it's not necessarily. <laughs> and secondly, we're here today to go through very slowly the steps of how we are going to build our 3D avatars. It's going to be entirely a point and click experience. You won't be expected to write any code. And the only download you'll do is downloading the finished avatar once we've used the convenient online avatar builder. So of course, uh, in front of you here, you'll see my staff page at the North Carolina State University Libraries webpage. Uh, this page can be reached by going to go.ncsu.edu slash Colin, C-O-L-I-N. If you go to that address, you'll find it takes you right through to the staff page. And on this page, you'll find all of my contact information by phone, email, my preferred way of getting in touch, uh, as well as some social media links if you find those useful as well. And anyone viewing this video, I, I hope that you understand that I'm a resource that's at your disposal. Uh, any difficulties you have with this instruction or any other uh, technological difficulties that go uh, hand in hand with your participation in this really exciting project, um, I want to be here to help you with that. Um, so please do not hesitate to get in touch um, via any of those channels you see here on my staff page. Today we're going to be using a really cool online application. Um, that like so many of the tools we'll be using uh, within this project is something we call open source, uh, free and open source software. Uh, and uh, my personal preference for open source software comes from the fact that uh, it is the most equitable way that technology can be developed and distributed uh, without something of a landlord standing between you and the creation that you'll be doing or the dissemination of that work. I think as creatives, um, we have a lot of kinship with open source and free software developers. And today we're going to be leveraging a really cool tool that was developed by a student at Georgia Tech University named Rhiannon Berry. So thank you very much to Rhiannon for her work on this software as well. Uh, and of course, we'll uh, share her contact information as we go along as well, or more to credit rather than to offer her uh, resource as a resource so much. Um, but before we get too far down that road, I do just want to uh, revisit the idea of the Brickyard Broadcast. This Brickyard Broadcast is going to be a spatial, real-world musical experience, um, which will happen through your internet web browser. So we will be occupying an internet space alongside one another uh, and hearing the same music that is localized to the three-dimensional space. In the same way that when you play a video game and you're walking down a creaky hallway or 
walking towards um, some sound at the end of that hallway, the sound might get louder as you walk down the hall, drawing your attention towards uh, whatever it is that the game developers have waiting there for you. Um, we will be taking advantage of that same technology set to create a really interesting sonic experience that we can co-locate and experience alongside one another. Um, so uh, if we're going to be experiencing alongside one another, we very well might want to see what one another look like <laughs> and not all just be a blank set, a blank slate of uh, you know some placeholder. Um, not that there's anything wrong with that. Some very cool placeholder avatars within the software we'll be using, but we want to offer everyone the opportunity to customize their uh, their persona within this space. And of course, um, when we deal with these uh, augmented and virtual realities that will are such as the one we're building together here. Uh, we're not always beholden to what we happen to look like in the default or material world, but we also at the same time can uh, attempt to make an avatar that does represent that. It's really a matter of personal preference, and um, no one participating in this project is mandated to make an avatar that looks just like them. Uh, you really should be able to choose how you would like to present yourself within this reality. Um, so, uh, this you've seen that I've flipped over into the web application we'll be using today. Uh, this is located on Rhiannon Berry's GitHub page. It's a project called Avatar Customizer. Uh, to make it as convenient as possible for all of our users to be uh, using this application without needing to even understand how something like GitHub works, um, I have made a shorthand link to that uh, same web page you just saw. And that is at go.ncsu.edu slash brickyard avatar. So I'm going to leave that up on the screen for a moment. Uh, Go links like the one you see here are a really handy way that we can redirect um, through to other websites on the web um, by using some NC State uh, infrastructure and web in infrastructure to send you through to where uh, we hope you'll be able to find easily uh, these resources. So I'm going to leave that up for a moment longer. It's go.ncsu.edu slash brickyard avatar. And if you're following along now, you might want to type that into your web browser of choice. Um, I suggest Mozilla Firefox for uh, a web browser that supports the free and open web. Um, I find it ideologically matches our mission as a library. However, uh, Google Chrome, uh, Microsoft Edge, or Safari should all work for this. Uh, whatever you're most comfortable using, go ahead and open up that web browser on your device and uh, you'll be able to get started. So I will minimize that, and you should see this page when you go through to that address. Now the default avatar you see in front of you that uh, comes up upon the page spawning, I believe is a randomized avatar. So as I refresh the page, you're getting an idea of some of the range of avatars that are available here. Um, there are limitations to the avatar options that are available here. The tool we're using was actually thrown together for a conference which happened in a virtual space this spring. Um, the IEEE, um, the Professional Society for Electrical Engineers, uh, virtual reality conference which happened in Atlanta this spring or was to happen in Atlanta before it was moved to an online venue in something called Mozilla Hubs which is the same application we'll be composing the Brickyard broadcast inside of. There are limited range um, for certain features. Uh, the body features are, are nearly uh, all identical, uh, defaulted. You, there's very few options there. And there's only four hairstyles. You know, I, I often wear my hair up, um, and that's not an option that's uh, available here. Um, so there are definitely some... Uh, creative liberties you might have to take to make an avatar that looks the way you'd like them to look, but there are some really cool opportunities for customization such that no two users will look the same. I think there's really impressive complexion diversity available within the, the range of avatars here. The colors, the blushes and skin tones you see are not the full range um, that are available here. And uh, the t-shirts that all of us uh, will be wearing and putting on our avatars are also highly customizable. So my plan is that we can just spend the next 10 to 15 minutes walking through creating a few avatars talking about how we will download this model uh, from the little web app uh, and how best to send these along um, 
to the team uh, that will be collecting them and making them available within the application. Cool. So if that's good by everybody, let's get started. So I'll refresh one more time so we can get another random avatar here and see a cool looking one here. And the way that this uh, little web app works is that there are three menus. There's a body menu, a head menu, and a t-shirt menu, which you toggle between by clicking these three buttons. There's also a live viewport, which if you click and drag within it, you can actually view your avatar from all angles. It's really great to know that it's coming along the way you'd like it to. Um, the avatar's eyes have automatic, um, not eye tracking, because we're not uh, tracking the eyes of any of our uh, real life users, um, but eye automation such that they're not looking out into space all the time, uh, just kind of blankly. They, they have a little bit of randomized movement to them, and the head will um, sync to the audio of the user who's using it. So when you speak, the head will uh, grow and shrink to kind of correspond to the voice so that as you look around the room you can tell who it is speaking to you. Um, and I find those to be really nice simple controls. It's also something you would call low polygonal uh, design. So this is meant to run really easily on all sorts of machines. You don't need to have a big beefy gaming computer in order to use uh, these avatars or to render them when other people are using them in your online spaces. And that's really convenient when we have a high number of people participating in these scenes like we very well may. So uh, now that we're familiar with that, let's click on over to this body tab. It's what it's going to default to opening up to. And then the first decision that we make regarding our character is a pretty simple one. There are only two body shapes that we're picking between. You have kind of a tapered body or uh, a very um, stock t-shirt kind of shape. Not a lot of control there. That looks like something from Rhiannon's developer notes um, that in this in-progress project is something she would like to uh, add some more options on. Um, so we, I'm going to go ahead and just for the sake of using the non-default, I'll use the little bit of a tapered look there. That brings us to one of the really cool features within this. Um, there are I suppose seven default tones that you can flip through um, that are some kind of um, touchstone complexion shades um, that are good reference shades. Um, however, there's a much wider uh, range of human complexions possible and Rhiannon has uh, given us absolute control over the shades that this character can have. Um, so whereas I think all of the, my color theory will fail me here, whereas almost all of those tones are over here in the orange spectrum, you know, human complexion is very diverse, but not so diverse as to represent very much of the color spectrum at all, really. Um, you can see lots of the tones that are available by default are in a very small segment of kind of this orange range of the, of the color wheel. Um, and I imagine if people are going for realistic tones, uh, there's a very narrow band that uh, you may be searching within uh, in order to find some uh, real life human complexion tones. Um, and you can see as I hop around, um, the way that I'm finding uh, these tones is by locating this slider to the approximate kind of neighborhood of where uh, it presents me with colors that I would like to achieve. And then you can really get there via a guess and check. So you can see that uh, this color slider obviously goes through our Roy G. Biv, our red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, violet, and then back around to red on the other side of the spectrum just to make sure that you're clear on what you're seeing. And then once we've located it somewhere that's close to the tone we would like, um, the darker uh, hues are on the bottom of this little inlaid uh, selector lighter are uh, navigate towards the uh, top left uh, or towards the top rather and then um, I suppose there's hue that uh, moves from left to right uh, it, as an inset of the uh, color spectrum that we see above so there's some tones you can get here you could uh, also if you'd like your character to look a little more Muppet like or something like that there's all sorts of 
got a little Hulk going here, or maybe a Kermit um, in this green spectrum. I don't think we have any restrictions on what you would like to, what we'd like you to look like. Uh, if you choose that you'd like something more realistic toned, you're more than welcome to choose that. Um, I know that's what many of my avatars uh, look like, are me trying to look as close as I can um, to my real life appearance for uh, maybe my business meetings. And then uh, when I also play around with online avatars that look nothing like any person you've ever seen. So maybe we'll settle on this tone right here for our little demonstration. I like that quite a bit. And it, you know, it's, uh, Realist, it's within uh, a realistic uh, complexion palette uh, that's not one of the default tones that are offered to us here. And then this blush is going to keep you from looking like a very cell painted um, character, right? So I'm going to uh, show you first we can eliminate blush, um, and they'll use for your the blush really affects your nose, your mouth, and a little bit of shading on the cheeks. If you eliminate the blush completely, you'll have the, those features are still there. You can see the nose didn't go anywhere, but it's the same color now. Um, it doesn't really stand out as much, right? Um, and then there's some nice defaults that really, I think, are built to contrast uh, the spectrum of complexions above. Um, however, you could also um, have that same uh, range of colors available to you. So I know um, there's many lipsticks or lip glosses that uh, kind of do the same uh, idea of giving high contrast against human skin tones. Uh, you, if you find yourself frequently wearing one of those, maybe you'd like to uh, pick your favorite. Otherwise, you might want to pick uh, a tone that contrasts well with what you've selected for the uh, for the overall head. We, we're all kind of des designing Sesame Street versions of ourselves here, right, to some, one degree or another. So I, um, I don't think hyper photorealism is something that's really achievable with this tool, nor is it the pursuit. Um, so I, I like this look we found here where I, there's a little bit of contrast. You can definitely tell where the facial features are um, against the, the tone beneath them. So once you found the one you'd like, if you'd like this pop-up to go away, you click the painting palette once again. Okay, well now that we have our uh, skin complexion and body dealt with, let's go back up to the top of the page and click over towards the head. Now this is where the real limits of the avatar builder here um, kind of present themselves. There's only a specific range of hair types you can really make available before you've built a very, very complex uh, application, which I don't think was the pursuit here for a really outstanding piece of student work. Um, there is a uh, underlying conversation about representation in 3D avatars that's important to bring up. Um, there are many features of individuals that have been poorly represented in 3D avatars over time. It's important to recognize that um, many uh, hairstyles uh, from uh, the people of African ancestry, uh, of Asian ancestry, have been really poorly represented um, within 3D character builders over time. Uh, a very narrow range of hairstyles have been made available, um, and uh, different types of hair have been uh, really poorly rendered in many cases. I think this designer did a very good job in selecting some hairstyles that, depending on how they're utilized, can represent many different types of people. Um, and by being uh, a poor global representation of all the types of hair that are available, uh, there's actually some sort of equality that comes with that, um, that these are pretty versatile hairstyles to be used in different ways. I think uh, in uh, her developer notes, Rhiannon kind of talks about this as a major pursuit to add in future iterations of this character builder uh, more hairstyles, um, and I look forward to that. But uh, we will have these um, options for us, these four options. So the options you have are to leave your character uh, bald with no hair. You have a very high and tight kind of anything from a, a Caesar to a, a fade kind of you can with your imagination kind of see this uh, hairstyle as that. You have um, a short haircut, anything from kind of a pixie cut to your Don Draper. Um, can kind of be seen there. And then um, I think the most commonly used, um, what I would use if I was representing my hair, uh, is this uh, sort of bob. Um, 
I don't think longer hairstyles are very easy to animate and something that doesn't have uh, physics that affect the hair. Um, and they can uh, kind of very quickly look like a squid has been dropped on top of someone's hair or on top of someone's head if, it's, if there's no reactivity to the mass of hair on top of the character's head. Um, so I, I think a little bit of imagination goes a long way here with this longer hairstyle as well. Um, I say let's go ahead and we'll play around with this longer style. Um, although I'll, maybe we can flip back and forth and show once we've chosen some hair colors what these different looks look like. So I'm going to click through these default colors. Um, we have our, our white hair, a very light blonde, a darker blonde, something of a maybe strawberry blonde or auburn, red, not, uh, not quite, um, redhead red, um, but almost a cartoon version of it. We have a brunette and a matte black uh, color there, almost matte black. I guess it's actually not um, the same color as our black background, is it? So uh, my eyes were playing tricks on me there. And then we have our familiar uh, paint palette again. And this is going to work exactly the same way with the exact same range of options that we had uh, on our complexion picker. So we can go ahead and find something that we find interesting here. I don't think there's... Let's, let's explore that darker range because it does uh, give more light range options uh, than it does darker. I think that's because there's a lot more allowance kind of when you're dealing with darker colors. Uh, you can find black on any color um, anywhere on the spectrum, right? Because uh, if you go to the bottom, the southwest corner here, it's always going to be black on any inset of color. So I think that's the reason um, that this these default colors kind of favor the lighter colors. Um, a little bit of color theory there, and um, so we could hop around, explore a little bit more of the blonde. You can see you have a lot of range of kind of these blonde colors that look um, to match um, some hair colors. Or if you select one of the defaults, um, you'll see it pops you to that color. So it's a nice way to say, oh, I'm about 10% off if, with one of the default colors. Um, I think uh, those of us who are closer to uh, silver haired, you can find those colors pretty easily by getting into that same range that we were dealing with for the complexions and then really living in that northwest uh, corner. Um, there's lots of cool uh, shades of gray that are available by staying on that uh, western side, that left-hand side of that color inlet. So maybe that's what we'll do. We'll leave this as a gray. And I'd like to, we'll click the uh, palette once again to make that go away. And let's take a look at what that looks like with some different hair types. So you can see the character takes a little bit of a different look depending on uh, what we pick there. And then of course, eye color is something that we uh, can take advantage of the wide range of different colors that are available to us here. I'm going to click through the defaults, which should feel pretty routine by this point on our fourth color selection. And I have blue eyes, so maybe we'll explore the blue color range here. Lots of, I think eyes are really a great, uh, a way, great way to get a unique look for this character and really make someone recognize uh, what you'd like the character to look like. So we can keep kind of this icy blue look here, uh, which isn't available in the defaults. Cool, so we're two thirds of the way there. Um, but in my opinion, most of the customization, the coolest customizing element is on this third page. So we're going to go up to the top of the page and click that t-shirt once again. And right away we find some other color uh, customization options. So we see the white as uh, what our model just kind of selected for itself when we booted up the page. It might be different for you. Um, and then there's some neat defaults. Um, I think they did a good job picking the defaults. And these might actually have been based off the actual colors of giveaway t-shirts that this conference was planning to have had. Um, however, that full range is still available to you. I'm going to go ahead and pick, in my opinion, the best color, which is Wolfpack Red here. Leave that there. And then there's also, uh, it's not on right now by default, the jacket stays off. But let's put a white jacket on. And you can see it's a little bit of a zip-up hoodie uh, is the 
a nice little flourish that they added here. And in the same way, we could uh, pick that color. I'm going to turn that off, um, although I think it looks great. I want to make sure it's as easy as possible to see the t-shirt designs that can be added. Now, uh, there are a few defaults. I don't think any of us would really want to be using this uh, conference t-shirt design, um, seeing as that's not really the event that we're associating with. Um, this is the Hubs logo, uh, which is a little Mozilla logo uh, for the service that we'll be entering these avatars into. I think it looks pretty cool. Um, but let's go ahead and find, we're going to navigate. I'm going to keep this open in one tab, and we'll come on back to it. Um, and uh, let's go find ourselves what's called a vectorized image. This is an image with a transparent background, um, so it'll look really good on this t-shirt. So I'm going to go over and I'm going to open up Google Image Search. There's lots of ways to get there. It's images.google.com. And let's, uh, let's look for North Carolina State University logo. Good place to start, I think. And you can see so many options here. So which of these would work and which one, who knows? Uh, there's some, some clues if you see this checkerboard behind an image that often is the, the shorthand, the visual shorthand to let you know that that's an image that does not have a white background. Um, it has a transparent background. Um, so that's one great clue. So maybe we'll come back to this logo that presented itself right away like that. But if you don't want to be guessing, uh, if you're not a pro in Google image search, there's a really nice little tool at the top. It's under I'm actually going to zoom my screen in a little bit so that this is a little bit easier for you to see. Uh, under your Google search bar, you'll see tools, and you can look color, and one of the options is transparent. And this is obviously referring to the background of the image. You know, the whole image isn't transparent, but the, uh, the image that we are looking at is against a transparent background rather than a white or a black one. Uh, Google sometimes will also represent this as kind of a gray shade. Um, so I've always really liked this Tuffy logo. Um, let's go ahead um, and we're going to need to save this image to our computer in order to upload it to the uh, avatar customizer. So let's go ahead and I'm going to right click the image, save image as, um, this is a point where we, our paths might deviate a little bit depending on how you manage the folder infrastructure on your computer and where you like to save images to. Uh, but just know the ol only time you're really going to need to call to this image is in the, you know, the next minute uh, when you just go ahead and upload it right back into another service. Um, so I'm just going to pick the pictures uh, folder on my computer. I'm going to name this Tuffy T-shirt. That's saving as a PNG image. And while we're here in this search result page, let's grab a couple more. Here's a really pretty seal. Uh, and maybe we'll search for North Carolina Symphony. do a save image as here. Great file name by whoever set up this website. Uh, NCS stacked transparent. That's very good. Very descriptive. Um, and heck, I'll even grab that logo um, from right here um, on the uh, Raleigh Civic Symphony website as well. You can really grab images from anywhere for this uh, for this exercise. and. Uh, maybe you'd like something that's a little less formal. Um, let's just get a picture of a cloud. That's cool. It's a neat cloud. You can see how it presents itself as black here in the in the preview, so that you can see it easily. But we can save that image as and do cloud T-shirt, and 
you know, depending on your level of expertise or the images at your disposal that kind of meet these needs, uh, there's lots you can do. Uh, if you have an image that you'd really like to use on a t-shirt and you don't know how to vectorize it and make it transparent, uh, I don't think I'm going to go into that uh, within this walkthrough, but feel free to email me, you know, at go.ncsu.edu slash Colin, at cpkina2 at ncsu.edu. Feel free to reach out. I can help you out with that. I'm very happy to vectorize some Im images and send them back for you. Um, but I don't want to go into the details of PowerPoint or whatever you might have on your computer right here in this video. So we return back to our other tab where we have this uh, pleasant little fellow uh, coming along nicely. And let's, on this front design here on that third tab, we're going to click this button, which means upload. And it's going to bring up our file manager. It very well might open to a place other than where you saved your file. Uh, I'm a Windows user, as you can tell by now. Um, so I really like the quick access tab. It'll show the most recent things you've saved on your computer often. So I'm going to grab it from there. Um, but I could also go to that actual destination folder where we were working out of. And let's just tr look at how some of these different images look. So see that first logo we imported? Oh, sorry. That was a the link to our text, but look how easy it is to replace it um, quickly. Let's use that. Yeah, that North Carolina Symphony logo looks really nice on there. Um, and then we could also try, uh, we talked about this. Man, I keep doing that, don't I? We talked about this logo as well. You know, that doesn't pop very well uh, there, a very small text but maybe against a black t-shirt it would pop better. Yeah, I think that looks a bit nicer. And you can always resave if the scaling isn't quite right. You can do a little bit of image editing to make this the logo itself larger. I think what it's doing is it custom scales. Um, so there's something about correct aspect ratio that kind of works best. Yeah, I guess and check will really be your best friend on that. And let's try that Tuffy as well. Here's our Tuffy t-shirt. and. Oh man, I, I want that t-shirt actually. That looks pretty cool. So, and you can see it looks great from all sorts of angles. I think this is really impressive work by Rhiannon uh, to have that looking as good as it does. Um, and you can see what I mean by the, the customization. The t-shirt can do a lot of work on that customization. We could throw a white jacket on and that looks pretty good. There's lots of options there. Uh, you can also put an image on the back. So I'll leave, I'll leave old Tuffy there on the front of the shirt. And let's do another upload. Going back into that folder we, where we've housed our uh, our images, and let's make use of that cloud we had. Uh, I got a little cloud on my back. That's neat. Could also um, put put the same image on the front and the back if we'd like. Lots of options. Um, I'll do one last swap. Really liked that. Um, those symphony images. Let's. You can tell I can't make up my mind. Yeah, so we'll put the symphony there across our shoulders. I think that looks pretty neat. Okay, so we've got an avatar, and you can make uh, as many as you these of these as you'd like. I could sit here all day and make them, but uh, for risk of making this video too long, let's go ahead and do the most important step, which is downloading the model. Um, many of you might be able to guess exactly what this is going to look like, and I apologize for not having made this larger a long time ago. Um, however, you can just click Download Model. It's not going to ask you where you would like it to save to, uh, if your browser works the way mine does. Uh, it's just going to go to your default location on your computer where downloaded files go to. In Firefox, um, you're going to get a little pop-up here. There's a download tab. Same thing in Chrome. Can't really speak to Edge and Safari with what they do with downloaded files. Um, but it should be very easy to find downloaded files, wherever you're used to things saving to from your web browser. That's where you're going to find it. And something that's really cool about this builder is it's using a brand new file format that has only been around for the last couple of years, which is a very modernized way of storing 3D files. It's called a .glb file. Um, and it's, for a myriad of reasons, very convenient for use on the web and really nice for our purposes. Um, I am going to open up the location on my computer where that file just stored to. 
something to be aware of every one of your downloads from this website is going to name its model custom underscore avatar so if you download one I would suggest you immediately go in and rename it so I'm going to name this trial run avatar one uh, it might be easier if you include your last name in this um, or some other identifying factor so that if we have a whole store of these that were being sent we can easily know which one assigns to you um, last name really feels like a good use for that um, and you're going to want to do that immediately um, because if you decide you want to go right back through and make another avatar we don't want to overwrite the one you had made before because they would have the same uh, same file name right so you can see I have my trial run avatar one here let's double click it see what happens Hey, it's our little fella. So this looks pretty cool, right? Um, and you can see that this looks a little more high fidelity than the one we saw in the preview, uh, just because we didn't really want to stress our web browser out, but now it's offline, it looks great. Um, and these are all animatable. Your hands, if you were using a VR headset, would map to these hands. Um, lots of cool little features like that. And you know, this is a custom viewing environment, so we can do things like move light around and get an idea of uh, what that looks like. I think that looks great. So uh, we'll have inst further instructions for you on what we you want to do with that uh, file. But I'll just say right now, if you're in doubt uh, with what to do with this avatar file, feel free to just email it to me. Uh, email it to myself, to Lisa, whoever really your contact point for this project is. I'm sure we'd all be happy to just receive these via email. And that's just going to be as easy as opening up an email. Uh, maybe throw some text into it just for the so it doesn't yell at you about sending an empty email and you'll drag that file drop it into the email and send it off um, and we'll try to give you a, a thumbs up to kind of say that it looks good on our end and it's working uh, hopefully we won't have to ask people to do this more than once um, but you know it's a fun enough activity right so with that, I will uh, end our recording here. I do just want to uh, reiterate our thanks to Rhiannon uh, Barry here. This is really outstanding work, and we have we've used uh, this open source tool so much throughout this year. It has really been invaluable to us. Um, so I just want to uh, give a little mention to Rhiannon's uh, website here and portfolio page, which is really great work. And thanks so much for your contribution into open source tools, Rhiannon. Um, and I will finally show you one more time my contact information with a special emphasis under my picture. You see my phone number and email address. Feel free to get in touch with me. And one more time, if you missed the address where that tool is being held, it's right here at go.ncsu.edu slash brickyard avatar. Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, have a great day and I hope to hear from you soon.